One thing we wanted to share with everybody up front is this year um, I'm recording our the video um, in hopes that we can um, not only just share it with team members who couldn't be there this evening, but even something we can share as a resource for other teams. Um, so just be aware of, of that. Um, take a moment here at the beginning. This is our first workshop, leadership workshop in a series. So this is the second year we've done a series of workshops. We have five planned for this year. They're every Monday, same time, eight o'clock, um, all on the same Zoom link that you clicked to get here tonight. Um, this week's is focused, as you can see, on servant leadership and a team mindset. Next week, we will have one on crucial conversations. The following week on crucial accountability. Um, the week after that on um, project management and risk management, and the final week on visioning and goals. So that's our entire series. Um, I strongly encouraged all of you to be here for this first one, as we've specifically designed it to be applicable to everyone on the team. Um, that said, you are all invited to attend all of the workshops in the series. Um, they're gonna be really, really good. Um, so even you know if you're not a team lead or even if you're not sure if you have aspirations to be a, a team lead, um, hopefully one thing that you realize after today's workshop is um, you are a leader. Um, and so these, these following workshops would still be relevant for you and I hope to see you there uh, as well. All right. Um, so let's jump into this. So here are the two questions that Jesse and I are gonna be focused on today, um, helping you all explore. That is why are we servant leaders and how do we do that? And how do we cultivate a team mindset? Here's the concept we wanna start with. Um, we can think of what we do on the robotics team as playing two games at the same time. And so here's a quote I like that's actually describes software projects, but I think it applies to first robotics as well, a series of resource limited, goal directed, cooperative games of invention and communication. I think that nicely defines what it is that we do as a team. The two games is this season, the one that we're currently in, if it were January. Um, and the, the second game is the next season, the one um, after the seniors graduate and we have a new round of freshmen who join the team. Obviously, we have to prioritize the first, um, but we can't ignore the second. Um, and so we have to find a balance and where that balance point is that shifts constantly. Um, and this concept of the two games is gonna be kind of a thread that runs through this evening's workshop. All right. Here are the two, pil the two pillars we're focused on today here are being servant leaders and having a team mindset and the questions and tools that, that help us develop that team mindset. These two pillars are what support our team culture. Um, and Despite all the stuff we can do in these leadership workshops and all the planning we can do with all of our project management and risk management, um, a strong team culture is gonna have the largest impact on our successes as a team. Um, and there's a neat quote here um, that Mr. John shared with us that culture eats strategy for breakfast. Um, and and I, I, lo I love that one just because it, it helps frame like, if you don't get the team culture right, it doesn't matter how ingenious your strategy is or how great your designs are. We are not gonna be successful as a team if we don't have a strong team culture. Um, so everything we're talking about today is to build that team culture. All right, we're gonna start with the servant leaders pillar and then we're gonna do the team mindset one afterward. So let's jump into servant leadership. Um, and the question, what is that? All right, so here's our, our first point of interaction for the evening. Um, oh, I almost forgot. I need to share with all of you the link to your own kind of, your own slide deck that you can use and should have pulled up 
Um, I'll put that here in the chat. So if you click on this link in the chat, these will be all of the different like breakout prompts, um, a link to this poll, um, basically everything that's like going to be done in the breakout rooms. Because one thing we've learned last year when we did this is once you're off in the breakout rooms, you can't see my screen anymore. And it's really hard to remember the prompts and stuff. So if you click on this link now, so it's open up in your browser, you can refer to it throughout um, the whole workshop. And so to get started, some of you have done three of these leadership workshops. Some of you, this is your first one. Um, so if you have an idea of what a servant leader is or have a guess of what a servant leader is, you can submit up to three words in that poll. Um, and go ahead and click on the link and you should be able to do that now. And we can see where we end up as a team. And this will make us kind of a visual word cloud of all the words that you're submitting. Is it working? How about that? Because my screen says no responses. So I'm just curious. <laughs> working for me. It is working? OK. Good to know. Ah, okay, it does look like it's working. We're getting there. All right, give everyone a few more seconds here to select your word. And then I'm going to get it into the presentation here and we'll go from there. All right, five more seconds, final words. Cool. And let's see. I think I'll have to reopen it. Give me one second here. I'm going to insert the word cloud so everyone can see it, and then we'll go from there. It'd be fun to see how many of you have been to a workshop before. If you want to put a, like a little reaction that like a little a little wave if you've been to a, one of these workshops before awesome nice so cool so must not have been too bad <laughs> if you came back <laughs> cool wow all right so this is great um, some of these words that are jumping out are like empathetic, listener, leader, compassionate, responsible. Um, it is evident that this is not a new concept to many of you, which is wonderful to see. So, very cool. All right, so here's a concise definition of what is a, a servant leader trying to focus on, on the key. What is the primary focus of a servant leader? What is the primary job function? And what's the primary method they use to achieve that? Um, 
the whole thing is here is allowing the team to keep moving forward, working towards those two games that we're playing at the same time. Um, and this showed up in the word cloud too, um, identifying and removing obstacles. And we're gonna see that there's some precursors for that, that you all identified in the word cloud. Um, because the primary method to be able to identify and remove obstacles is to listen and respond thoughtfully. Um, and that showed up in, in big green letters in that word cloud, which was great. All right. All right, so another question that we like to ask a lot on the team and certainly throughout these series of workshops is why? Like, so why are we servant leaders? Um, and here's a good place to start. Yeah, so when I started helping with these workshops, I wanted to understand what the Huskies were all about. So I was like, hey, do you have a, a mission statement? And you did, and this is your mission statement. Um, I won't read the whole thing, but if we advance to the next, slide I kind of highlighted the key uh, action words here like the key values in this mission statement um, and then if you want to go to the next slide just put them all sort of separated it out kind of boiled down your mission statement and these are the things that you're focused on and these are amazing these are amazing goals to have um, so one thing that's really interesting to note here is quite a few of them talk about leadership and they talk about serving others, which is really cool. So obviously learning about servant leadership um, will be a huge help to meeting your mission and your goals. Awesome. So here's, this is gonna be our first breakout room activity. And what we wanna picture is, what we want you to picture is the following scenario. This might be really easy for you to picture because you may be a new student on the team, in which case this is perfect. Um, but for those of you who aren't, ask, well, if I were a new student on the team or looking at the new students who are with us this evening, what kind of an experience do you want them to have on this team? When they think back to their first season, what is it that you want them to remember? Um, and so this is what we're gonna discuss at first. So I'm gonna set up some breakout rooms here. We're gonna give you five minutes in the breakout room um, to talk, and then you're gonna get kicked back into here. Um, and we'll try to get everybody in here. Um, I'm just scanning through the rooms right now. So I'm gonna to try to spread out the mentors a little bit. So we're not all in the same place. I think I did that correctly. If anyone notices a problem, let me know and I'll fix it. Um, but I think we're somewhat distributed. So we should have through four to five people, I think in every room. All right, so we got a five minute timer. These prompts are in the slides that I sent out to everyone, right? So I, I put that in the chat. So again, if you look in the chat before I open the breakout rooms, you can click on the link and you can see these prompts right there. All right, let's give this a shot. Gonna open up the rooms and see everybody in five minutes. All right, welcome back everyone. So I didn't have, I wasn't clear about this before we did the breakout rooms, but what we'd like to do now um, is we want all the different groups to share, um, to be ready to share in the Zoom chat. Um, a few descriptors of what you want that new student's experience to be like. So go ahead and type those into the Zoom chat. We'll give everyone a minute. We'll hit return together, they'll fly by. Um, Jesse and I will highlight um, some of them as we see them. Looking for, there we go. Cool, all right. On through, or I guess I'll calm down. Three, two, one, enter. Whoa, so many ideas. I see engaging, inclusive, community, friends, camaraderie, friendly, engaged, involved. 
learning new things. I feel like they had a place. I like that. Social interactions, skills, relationships beyond the season, culture, more engagement. They want to come back. I think that's really a good measure. That's excellent. Lots of engaging, meaningful, connected to the family. These are fantastic. All right. So awesome. Very, really, really good. Cool. Wow. You all are great at this. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So we know what we want the new members experience to be like. Um, we have these different words to describe what it is to be a servant leader. A reasonable question is, okay, how do we go about doing that? And so what we're sharing with you this evening is here are three things that servant leaders do. Um, some of these have already been highlighted in terms of the word cloud that, that you brainstormed. S step one is to listen and to respond with empathy and compassion. You can't skip this step. Um, without this step, you don't know what you need to do. You don't know how to remove the obstacles if you haven't stopped to actually listen um, and respond thoughtfully. So that's step one. Step two is we use something called EDGE, explain, demonstrate, guide, and enable. This is a technique many of you are familiar with, so we'll, we'll, we'll explain that as well. Um, and then finally, what you all do when you're servant leaders is you set the example for, you apply, you share, you explain why we have the tools we have to build the culture we have. Um, that is critically important. And that's the focus of the whole second part of this evening. Um, so let's jump into empathy and compassion. So here are four different ways you can feel about someone or someone's experience. Um, this is from some teacher training that I did um, a couple of years ago. Um, and so I think thinking about these terms and how they're similar and different is really important. Um, so if you just see someone suffering from a distance, that's just pity. You feel pity towards them. Um, that's not what we're looking for for servant leaders. Um, sympathy is you see that suffering and you feel sad for them, um, but you're still seeing it from the outside. Um, and we're, we're looking for a bit more than just that from our servant leaders as well. We're really looking for you all to ha have empathy. You need to see it through the new members' perspective, see it through their eyes, um, be aware of what they're feeling, um, even though their experience might be considerably different than yours. Um, and that's a really important first step. Uh, and then I would argue that in addition to having the empathy, you need to actually act on it as a servant leader. Um, by, by acting on it is where you elevate that to the level of compassion. Um, and that's where you're actually going to make things better for them um, and remove those obstacles and help move, move them forward. And so that's, that's a big part of the how we do this as servant leaders. Here's a tool that we use every day, multiple times a day at every robotics meeting. Um, and this is the edge method. Um, this is something that we expect every member on the team to be familiar with, um, no matter what their role is on the team and what, whether they're the one being, being taught or, or being, uh, doing the demonstrations. Um, the reason why we have to first listen and, and thoughtfully uh, is because you don't know where you need to start on this edge continuum. Um, where you start on this edge continuum is different for every person. It's different for every situation. And so you need to decide and, and, and talk and listen. Do we need to start with explaining how to do something, why we're doing something? Who else should be present for this? This is a learning opportunity now. How many people could benefit from this discussion? Um, are we at the point where, where I'm going to demonstrate it as the teacher? Um, I need to do so at an appropriate pace. I need to check as, for understanding as I go. Um, once we've reached a certain level of comfort, um, then it's time to guide where now the person who was observing before is now performing the operation. I'm not reaching in there and grabbing it. I'm being patient. I'm offering guidance. Um, they're building up their skill. They're building up their confidence. Um, 
And then we eventually get to the point where both the teacher and the learner agree like, hey, we're at this enable point. You, let's make sure you have the tools to be successful. You have the skill, you have the confidence, you have what you need. Um, and now you can work on this independently. Um, this is at the heart of like how we pass down the stuff we learn to each other on our team. We have an example for you. All right, so, so Jesse and I have an example to kind of put the servant leadership stuff in context and make this a little bit more concrete. So here's our example. Um, let me set the stage and then Jesse and I will each, each play a role. Um, the assembly team is working on the robot in room 116. Um, Jesse is in the process of bolting gussets to the chassis, okay? Um, I'm playing the role of the team lead and I hand, um, and, and so that's where our interaction is gonna start. All right, Jesse. Here's a torque wrench. You need to use this when you tighten the bolts um, on the chassis. Only tighten until the wrench clicks. Thanks. So Jesse looks around the room. Other people are busy working on the robot. There's some riveting, there's some de-riveting, there's some other activities going on. But after a while, she tightens the bolts. I come back. What have you done? The tube is crushed. We're gonna have to remill this piece and it's gonna take us a whole nother day to get it back on the robot. This really sets us back in the schedule. I just did what you said. It's not my fault. That's your scenario for you all to think about. This could happen. All right. Here, some of you may recognize the scenario from last year, um, but we've added some additional questions for you to consider. You are not gonna have time in your breakout room to consider all of these questions. Um, so scan through them quickly and decide which ones are most meaningful to you. Um, or if you did this list last year, focus on ones that seem unfamiliar, because um, I think those will be the most meaningful. We're going to give you five minutes to discuss again. Um, and this time I'll be better about explaining the expectations when you come back. When you do come back, please have one person for your group selected as the spokesperson um, who can share your group's thoughts um, on one or more of these prompts. Now we have a ton of breakout rooms, so we're probably not going to have everybody do that, but I at least want a couple to share out their ideas related to one or more of these different prompts. Um, and I didn't notice it in time before, but someone asked if I could share the link again. So let me do that right now before I open up the breakout rooms. There's the link. So go ahead and click in that in the chat if you need a local copy of the prompts. And I'll open up the rooms and we'll all be back together to share out in five minutes. All right, welcome back everyone. So we wanna hear from a, a few different groups. So if you're the group spokesperson and wants to share your group's discussion for one or more of these prompts, go ahead and hit the raise hand thing um, and we'll do at least a couple of these. All right, Sir, Sir Vatsa, go ahead, get us started. Oh, one second. Uh, so we said that if the, the student with a uh, torque wrench probably feels like he doesn't, he didn't get a proper instruction or he didn't get enough help or he, he just feels like he wasn't led in the right direction. Uh, the team leader probably feels, well, we thought that if we were the team leader, we'd probably feel a little bit guilty because we kind of misled them. But like, I feel in, in your situation, you kind of show that the leader kind of felt annoyed. Uh, uh, people who share equal responsibility, the onlookers kind of, the people that saw it happen and didn't really help with it, um what should be the end goal of this interaction uh the two should be one is to get the part done and the other should be uh to get um to get to enable the other to enable the new member so it doesn't make the mistake again that's basically what we said great those are all fantastic fantastic points 
Ayush, does your group have more to add to uh, to some of these? Some of these? Uh, yeah. So we kind of talked about like um like the end goal and like uh, what should be the goal of the interaction. We're kind of saying like have that goal of like being able to trust your lead and like when you didn't you don't know how to like to torque uh torque the wrench like go up to your lead and be able to ask for like that help and like oh I didn't understand how to do this could you just like go over it one more time and like build that kind of relationship with the lead and trust. That is great. And we're definitely going to touch on that later this evening. Um, Andy, what did your group focus on? Yeah, so we talked about who else shared responsibility besides the leader and the student. Um, we discussed how a lot of times in these situations, um, the student will turn to someone else in their immediate proximity, right, if they really don't know how to do something. Um, so it's often, you know, it can be incumbent on the returning members or other qualified members in the room to help them out if they seek help beyond just the lead. Um, and then we also touched like the other groups on the intended end and we echoed the same points, not only completing the task at hand, um, but also, you know, preparing that student so they could teach someone in the future. So building kind of like the sustainability of teaching. Excellent. Arvon, what's your group have to uh, add? Something else to add is how we discussed how relevant the edge method was here, because the interaction could have started by explaining the task, then demonstrating how to do it making sure to guide the student, and in the end, enabling not only him, but the whole team. For sure. Definitely a missed opportunity there. Jack? Yeah, I wanted to bring up a really good point that Anderson was talking about, about how we can improve the interaction, because it was, why is the, or how can we make the interaction better? The way I saw it was the simple not have them mess up the part but anderson brought up a really good point about how if it does mess up don't go at them very annoyed and angrily and like go down on them yelling at them that they're making things or putting things behind schedule but do it like gently and not kind of yell at them and be angry absolutely that's an excellent i was absolutely not responding with any empathy there whatsoever <laughs> absolutely uh Nikhil? One thing we talked about is like there's this counter argument that 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 could be said that you know you only learn from making mistakes and and while that's true the reason we have the edge method is because we most likely already made have made those mistakes before and the reason that we use the edge method edge method is to share um kind of um how we've learned from those mistakes so i think it's I, it's okay for the student to make new mistakes right because then then everybody's learning right so if the student did something that no one knew about, then the edge method doesn't really apply because no one's ever really guided in that way. And that's something that we need to learn as a team. Um, but we use the edge method primarily to, to, um, to make sure we don't fall into mistakes that we've done before, like in this case, bending a one by one. So that's something we talked about. That's an excellent point. Yeah. No, we've definitely done this before. We've had robot captains crush our two by one tubes before. So this is, um, yeah, it happens. Um, th those are fantastic, all those things that the group shared away. Um, one thing I guess I just wanna be ex explicitly mentioned that, that Jesse and I were talking about in terms of the scenario is keep in mind that maybe the newer member with the torque wrench doesn't yet have the confidence not only to ask the team lead, but even the team members. And so as someone else in the room, as someone else just aware of the surroundings, if someone looks uncertain, uncomfortable, that is them asking for help. That is them asking for you to step in even if they haven't verbalized it. So we just gotta keep an eye out for that as well um, as we work towards building up that trust um, that you all were talking about. So, fantastic. All right, we're gonna transition a little bit here. Um, into something that's really new that we haven't talked about in previous leadership workshops. Um, and that is servant leadership is certainly nothing new to many of you. Um, and everyone is a servant leader at times. Um, and depending on your role, it might be almost all of the time. Um, but everyone is always a team player. And so we wanted to make sure we focus the rest of this evening on what do we mean by that? Um, so we first want your ideas. So we're gonna do another breakout room. This one's shorter. I'm gonna give you less time, only three minutes. Um, we have a couple prompts here just to kind of see what you think about this idea, which is, yeah, I'm sure you have some ideas about it, but it's still new to everyone. We haven't done this before. Um, when we come back, 
be ready to share specific strengths in the Zoom chat like we did before, but also we're going to ask um, one room to share out um, one room to share out the why, the, the second bullet point, and one room to share out the how. Um, and we'll go from that as well. All right, so see you all in three minutes. All right, welcome back. So go ahead and type into the chat your strengths. And I'll give you a few seconds to do that. And then we'll flood the strength chat. All right, so strengths of a team player. Three, two, one, enter. These are wonderful. Enabling, cooperation, open to ideas, communicative, listening, efficiency, cooperation, encouragement, puts the team before themselves, discipline, dedication. Wow. Wow. Willing to accept criticism, collaboration, thinking of the group members, keeping the ultimate goal in mind, inclusive, collective whole. These are so good. Boosting each other up. Oh, I love that. I love that. We're definitely these are excellent. These next year. <laughs> <laughs> and so Jesse and I were like, oh, we're going to keep track of these because we'll make some revisions for the future. So these are what we came up with. <laughs> um, which many of you have, have similar ones as well. So I don't think we were too far off base. Um, we came we up with five. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh gosh, things. yes. <laughs> Thank you, Jesse. Yeah. All right, so we need one room. If your room has some, something cool to share about the why do we wanna have a team player mass mindset? If you're or like, oh yeah, we had a good conversation about that. Raise your hand. We'll give you a chance to share out here. All right. Raj, go ahead. Why? Why do we want this? Um, so we were just talking about how like the most successful teams mm -hmm. are the teams that set aside their differences and focus on them like the 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 biggest, most like ultimate goal. Mm -hmm. Um so we were talking about it's important to have a, that kind of mindset because like if you have that kind of mindset and you do your own part to to like attain that mindset, you'll be contributing your part on the team to be like the most successful team that you can be. Excellent, very cool. And how about one of the groups to share their dis discussion related to, this is really important, this is contrasting. We're gonna learn more about contrasting next week. Um, how is a team player mindset different than servant leadership? Um, go ahead, Alex, what do you think? Well, we were just talking about the fact that a servant leader is someone who's like trying to serve, you know, their uh, members and trying to help them out, while a team player is trying to like bounce off ideas and more so is like playing within the game than like being a leader. Cool. Yeah. Samika, does your group have something to add to that too? Yeah, so we were kind of talking about how like a servant leader is focused on like each individual member, kind of like what Alex was saying, but then also um, a leader, it's kind of like circumstantial. So like in certain moments, you're going to be a leader and you're going to have to guide people, but you're always going to be a team player. And like, that's something that's constantly happening. Excellent. That is great summary. Cool. All right. Now I'll share <laughs> these five strengths that, that Jesse and I came up with. Um, so when we were brainstorming on strengths of a team player, these are, are what we came up with. We said team players are humble. I think many of you um, commented on this in, in the chat. Um, disciplined, that, that word showed up as, as well. Um, compassionate, um, there were many comments about this as well. Um, courteous, and that, that might seem odd at first glance, but when we share the tools that we use to be courteous with each other, I think that's gonna make more sense. Um, and transparent, and, and what we mean by this is it's easy for others to see what you're doing and you're open about your communication and your accountability, um, and that's one of the strengths of being a, a team player. Um, 
So what we have for you is we've got, for each of these five, um, we have a little bit of information and then an example that hopefully makes this a little bit more concrete um, as we go. So basically we wanna share a tool with you for each of these five strengths that you can use to be a strong team player. All right. So here's the first one, um, standing on the shoulder of giants. So that's the tool that relates to being humble. Um, there's a Steve Jobs quote that says, good artists copy, great artists steal. Um, more traditionally, this is referred to as the make versus buy decision. Um, and, the, and, and the quote at the bottom, I think sums this up nicely. The idea is, using the understanding gained by major thinkers who have gone before in order to make intellectual progress, right? There's a lot of great stuff that's been done. Let's leverage it. We want to be clear what we mean by this though. Um, standing on the shoulder of giants does not limit our creativity and our innovation. Creativity and innovation are absolutely essential um, on our team. Um, what this does do is it results in what's referred to as an informed decision, um, a decision based on the great work of others. Um, and it requ still requires creativity to then adapt those ideas to our particular situation. Um, so we're still going to be innovating. We're still gonna be failing plenty and learning from it, um, but we're not gonna start with a blank sheet of paper is the idea. All right, let's make this more concrete. Here are some concrete examples. Um, this first one is one of my favorite examples. So in deep space a few years ago, um, we were in the process of designing a mechanism for placing hatches on those ships um, and to align our hatch collector with the surface. And those designs were getting pretty complicated. And one of our Navistar mentors, um, basically just walked in and looked at these designs on the whiteboard and said, you should just buy a saloon door hinge and it would do that for you. And so after we learned what that was, we went to Home Depot the next day and just bought a couple of saloon door hinges and we didn't design anything. We just bolted this on our robot and it had the multiple degrees of freedom we needed for a successful mechanism. That was a great example of leveraging what was already out there. Um, a more recent example, which more of you might be able to identify with, is our swerve drive design that we did this past spring. Um, we didn't just start designing a new swerve drive. We looked at our previous swerve drive design. We looked at the best commercial ones out there. We looked at the best team ones out there. We adapted those into one to meet our requirements and ended up with a really cool mechanism. Um, that's a great example of standing on the shoulders of giants. All right, our next strength is being disciplined. And the tool we have for you for being disciplined um, is relates to workflows, right? Workflows are simply commitments made by team members to each other, okay? We have a lot of workflows on our team. They're not just there because, they're there because these are tools that we not only use to be good team players, but we use to mitigate risks. So we'll talk about that in a future workshop. Um, it improves our communication. Um, and it results in long-term efficiency. It might seem like we're not being efficient in the short term, but we are in the long term. So when we take a shortcut in pretty much anything, think of a shortcut as you're borrowing resources from the future, and you're going to have to pay those back. And you're probably going to have to pay it back with interest. Um, so being disciplined um, results in that long-term efficiency. All right, that's pretty abstract. Here's some very concrete examples of that. Um, when we used to order stuff for the robot, uh, that would just be explained verbally. And then someone would forget those things, um, or order them incorrectly. And so now we have a Google sheet and we fill it out and we don't make those mistakes anymore. Um, even when we were using Trello, we all, many people had different definitions of what it meant for a task to be done. So something would be marked as done maybe it wasn't really done or didn't meet everybody's definition of done. So now we have a done list and a confirmed done list. Um, and that helps us tremendously there. 
Um, this one's, this one's kind of sad, but we used to forget to do things when we're preparing the robot for a competition match before we took it to a field, or we'd forget to do things like when we were on the field, like load the game element or have it facing in the proper direction. Um, I know many of you haven't had the opportunity to be at a competition, um, but it won't be that long before we do. We now have a checklist of like all the tasks we do before every match in the pit, before every match on the field. Um, and we don't make those mistakes anymore and it's great. Um, but that takes discipline to, to do all those things. All right. Um, third strength. This is the same slide as before. What we wanted to highlight here is not read this to you again, but really just emphasize that empathy and compassion isn't just reserved for servant leaders, it's for everybody on the team. Um, and I think this came through with many of the strengths that you all shared in the chat. Um, we all need to strive for empathy and compassion with each other. And that goes such a, a long, long way for doing that. And some specific tools for how to do this, um, will be coming up in our next two leadership workshops. So next week's leadership workshop is on crucial conversations, um, which, which definitely focuses on how we as team players can have these um, very important conversations um, in a thoughtful manner. Um, and on crucial accountability, which is the third workshop in our series, um, which builds on the crucial conversations one. And just as a teaser for these, here is a concept which I think hopefully picks your interest, piques your interest. Um, we'll have you coming back in a couple of weeks. It's the idea of fundamental attribution error. Um, and what that is, is it's this psychology term where people tend to assume that other people's actions depend upon what kind of a person they are rather than the environmental forces that influence them. So-and-so didn't do this thing because they're lazy, because they don't care about our team whatever it happens to be. That's the fundamental attribution error. And so we're gonna explore in a future workshops, um, how do we avoid making that error? Um, and, and empathy and compassion is a big part of that. Um, let's see. All right, we've got a couple more strengths and tools, um, and then we'll put this all together into some really cool things for you all to discuss. Um, here is our next one. Courteous. I said this one might be a little bit confusing. The tool we use to be courteous to each other is to leave breadcrumbs. Probably still confusing. This is what I mean by that. Um, breadcrumbs are the things we leave to help other people or to help your future self, meaning yourself tomorrow or a week later or a month later, find the path, okay? Breadcrumbs are things like capturing what is the next step, okay? Let me, what can I do to make it easier for the next person who's working on this task? Um, and, and here's a really powerful one. When you interrupt someone, which happens all the time, and of course that's okay at a robotics meeting, Give them a moment, pause and be patient, and let them capture what their next step is, or let them hand off what they're doing to somewhere else so that that isn't lost. Um, and these are just very simple things we can do to be courteous to each other. Um, here's what that looks like. When we're done with tools and materials, we put them back where they belong. That's a really easy thing to do, to be courteous to each other. When we are working on a part for a mechanism, we put it back in the tote for that mechanism. Maybe we're not gonna be there the next day and someone's gonna to need to be able to find that part so they can make progress. At the end of the meeting, we update Trello. We update the card saying, hey, here's what I did today. Here's what the next steps are. Um, if you're writing software, you leave some comments to help everybody else and yourself out in the future so we know what that code does. Um, if a mentor is spending time sitting with you doing a design review, 
uh, you create that revision checklist of here's all the little changes I need to make to the CAD model to incorporate their feedback. Um, so things aren't forgotten and have to be repeated. Um, each one of these is really simple. Um, each one of these doesn't take much time. Added together for a team our size, it has a tremendous impact. Um, and, and we felt like the best way to describe all this stuff is we're just being courteous to each other. That's part of being a team player. All right, here's our final strength, being transparent. This came up in, in a lot of the discussions already, which is awesome. And a great way to be transparent is to admit failure. Um, here's a quote from one of the authors of Crucial Accountability, um, the book which uh, is inspired our third uh, leadership workshop. The health of any relationship team or organization can be measured by the lag time between identifying and discussing problems. How much time passes between someone on the team noticing something isn't right and the team discussing that so that they can address it. Um, and as, as um, you all mentioned earlier when we were sharing out from our breakout rooms, we're going to make mistakes. Um, it's not an if, it's simply a when. Um, we keep finding new ones to make. Um, and so we all really need to model that that's okay. Um, we recognize that's gonna happen. We know we can learn from it. We know we should ask questions. We know we should get help. Um, it's okay not to always be right. No one is always right. Um, no one knows everything, right? Um, there's a lot of uh, comments in here about just the inclusivity and valuing others on the team. The diversity of our team is, is what makes this all work. Um, a great way to practice servant leadership is admit your own mistakes. What a powerful thing to model to everyone else on the team. Um, and here's some specific examples of how we can do that. Um, so some of these, um, you're having a conversation with a teammate. It doesn't go well and they leave pretty mad. You, you messed it up, that happens. Um, you reach out to a mentor and you're like, you know what, I could use some coaching on how to have a better conversation with this person, okay? Um, and that'll be a focus of next week's workshop as well. Um, you're working on a mechanism. It's not working. You tweak it. It still doesn't work. You tweak it. You still doesn't work. You realize that you just need to stop and get some other people involved to reconsider the design. Okay. That shows a lot of maturity right there. Um, the robot is running. The gearbox doesn't sound like it usually sounds. You don't just hope it's going to get better. You tell the future project manager, hey, I think the gearbox sounds wonky, right? And we can look into it before some like serious damage is done. Um, you're cutting aluminum tube, something we do every day. The bandsaw blade breaks. You know what? They break. We have three of them stored in the closet because that happens. But you tell someone, you tell a coach, and the coach replaces the blade so we can keep making progress. Um, you said you're going to, you told the awards lead, hey, I'm going to provide feedback on the chairman's essay. You waited till the last day to do it. We sometimes procrastinate like that. Um, but then all of a sudden you realize, oh, I got to take my younger sister to soccer practice. Um, that's okay, things like that happen. You don't just not say anything, you immediately message the awards lead and say, hey, I made this commitment, I'm not gonna be able to make it and I want you to know as soon as possible, All right? That's about being accountable and being transparent. Um, maybe you're sanding a gusset um, and all of a sudden the belt sander starts smoking because it's caught fire. Um, you tell a coach right away so we can put the fire out, right? That's an important part of admitting failure. Um, probably not your fault. Let's not set the school on fire. All right. So just to summarize, these were the five strengths that we focused on today. There are many more strengths. You all did a great job enumerating those. Um, for each of these, we gave you a concrete tool that we think um, could help you do this. So whether that's standing on the shoulder of giants, whether it's following workflows, acting on empathy, leaving breadcrumbs, model learning from failure, um, you have a tool for each one. We expect at this point, this might be a little overwhelming. And you're like, how am I possibly gonna remember all of these different parts of all of these different tools so I can be a team player? Um, and we agree with you, <laughs> it's a lot um, and it is overwhelming. Um, and so here's the strategy we offer you. We think it's very powerful that to ask questions. 
and you can improve your focus and your effectiveness as a team player by just asking questions throughout the meeting as you do things. Um, this is just part of being reflective and, and asking yourself, hey, I'm doing this thing. Is this the most important thing I can do right now? Um, or maybe you're the one holding the torque wrench and you're like, what do I need to be successful in completing this task, right? Just pausing and reflecting on that, who can help me, um, can be really powerful. Um, do I need guidance? Um, am I the best person to complete the task? Maybe I am really good at assembling this gearbox. And so I should grab three new members and we could start learning how gearboxes get assembled, right? There's an opportunity here that I don't wanna waste by just doing it by myself. Um, a really important question is what is the end goal? So there's this phrase, start with the end in mind. You're gonna hear that next week, I expect. Um, if you don't know where you're going, it's really hard to figure out how to get there. So that's a good question to ask yourself. Um, things didn't work out. There's some sort of a failure. Really important to stop and pause. What did I learn? Um, and just as a team member, what can we do differently to improve? Every year, our team gets stronger because every year team members identify improvements. That's huge. Um, so many of these, I would say just focus on when we pause to reflect and ask questions, we kind of settle ourselves down enough um, and get back in like a mindset where we can make really good choices. Um, I think it's when we're rushing along and not pausing where we then regret some of those uh, shortcuts taken later. So this is serious. still a lot of questions. You're probably still not gonna remember all these questions. So if there's one thing that you could remember, this is what Jesse and I have come up with. How does what I'm doing move the team forward to our goals? If you can only remember one question to ask over and over again throughout a meeting, this is the one. Um, that will help you focus um, from a team player mindset um, and help the team move towards our goals. That's key. All right, that was a lot of tools. That's a lot of questions. So we've got a couple of scenarios here for you. All right, here's what we have. So we're gonna do a breakout room. Um, and we've got two different scenarios here. Um, I would say pick one. Jesse, I guess, probably. Okay, pick one in your yeah. group. Um, if it goes really quick, of course you can discuss the other. Um, but here are the two scenarios. And again, these are on the, the slide link that I shared in the chat. Um, first one, you observe that someone is fidgeting. They're playing with scissors or a stapler or who knows what random thing they picked up off of the table. Looks like they don't know what to do. Things for your group to discuss. Okay, we've got three different prompts there. Second scenario, it's 8.50 p.m. We have to leave at 9 p.m. You personally are responsible for bolting a confusing gusset, meaning we don't even know which way it goes, onto the robot chassis. You stood up during dinner and you promised that it would be done tonight, okay? We've got prompts for you there. Three prompts there for you to, to discuss. So pick one of these two scenarios. We're going to give you, are we doing five minutes? Uh, 10 minutes? Or 10 minutes for this one? Then we still have time to share out? I think so. Yeah, yeah these are That's media discussions. All right, I'll set the timer longer. Let's do nine just so we have time to come back and actually talk. I'm going to just glance at the yeah. clock. Perfect. Oh, yeah. All right. Nine minutes. Good discussion here. We'll come back and share out. Here we go. All right. Welcome back, everyone. Let's start with the first scenario. So I realize only some of the groups did each scenario, most likely. Um, if your group spokesperson has uh, would like to share your reaction to the first scenario, go ahead and raise your hand, and we'll do several of those, um, and then we'll move on to the second scenario. All right, Maz, you're up first. What have you got? 
Uh, so basically what my group said is for the first question in scenario one. Uh, so you want to be compassionate and you want to make sure that like, you don't want to be like, take like a mean approach. You, you want to go up to and say like, do you need help with something? Do you need something to do? Basically don't assume they're trying to be lazy. And like in the same vein, which what may not be appropriate is like accusing them of like slacking off or trying to avoid work. And then we said, if the team player mindset wasn't present, it would lead to a lot more frustration between uh, people in the team because uh, they would all be trying to do what they want to do instead of working as a team together. Excellent. That is a great example of that fundamental attribution error thing that we alluded to. So cool. All right, Jack, what did your group talk about? Yeah, we. I really like some of the points that we brought up. Kind of, if they're over there fidgeting instead of just yelling at them to like, oh, stop slacking off or go do something productive to help the team. Kind of instead of like the sympathies, you're looking at them, use more empathy and put yourself in their shoes because they probably don't know what to do, which is probably the reason they're fidgeting. And don't assume that they're trying to slack off, but that they don't know how to help and guide them. And if they don't have that confidence to talk to a team lead or a returning member, help engage them and be the bridge between the lack of confidence and connecting with the other members. I love that word bridge. That is like such an important role to serve. Yeah. Oh, great. Nice. Other groups wanted to share their reactions to the first scenario? All right, well, let, we'll have plenty of time then to talk about the second scenario. So who's got stuff, thoughts to share on the second scenario? All right, Anaya. All right, um, so I was telling my group that this scenario hit a little bit close to home because <laughs> this has definitely happened to me before. Um, but it was a valuable learning experience because um, I've done both the things that you should do and the things you shouldn't do that I've learned. Um, so rather than trying to rush the product out in the next 10 minutes um, just to fulfill the deadline that I promised, uh, I realized that it's more important to just admit that you need more time uh, and communicate with coaches, FPMs, leads with the resources that you need to make sure that it gets done as efficiently as possible and address those roadblocks that I might have faced um, that prevented me from getting it done on time. Um, so making sure that you understand um, what went wrong um, and what you can do to fix it and then being taking the time at the next meeting or whatever um, and working with others to make sure that you get something done as the best, the best product it can be and as efficiently as possible. Excellent. We were not thinking of anyone in particular when we came up with these scenarios. Just want to be clear about this. Totally fictitious. So, <laughs> um, Safia, what did your group talk about? Um, we just wanted to add that, like, the reason that um, we can be confident in the choice to, like, do it in IS at an instead of trying to rush it out um, and instead plan to um, complete it later when you have more time is because, like, our team culture values um, completing stuff with quality and being honest with um, where we're at and the challenges we face instead of just like ignoring these and um, trying to create something that shouldn't be happening. So by valuing like the quality of the um, end product instead of like how fast it gets done, um, people can not feel afraid to admit that they didn't get it done and instead like want to put extra time into finishing it. I love that focus on like feeling afraid. I think that's a very real thing that many of us can identify with. And the team culture is what allows us to get over that fear, I guess. Um, yeah, Matthew? So our group kind of talked about valuing the quality of the product over the speed as well. And just kind of letting people know that you can't finish it and kind of reflecting over what you can do to get it done in later times. Absolutely, yeah. Alex? 
And then one last thing I'll just add on is the fact our group talked about, like, there are times, though, like, you know, especially like, during competition where you just have to get it done. You know, we don't have it tomorrow, but it's important to, like, recognize when that situation is because a lot of times we like to think that, like, we have to get it done now, but in reality, we still have tomorrow or, like, we still have the next day. I guess part of it there is like in some of those high pressure situations is getting getting the right people involved to make that those really tough decisions, right? Um, and to to ask those questions of like, do we really have to do it now, right? Do we really think we don't have an option? Um, and getting other people to check us is is so important. Those are fantastic. Other groups have things they they discuss they'd like to share with the the rest of us. All right, this is wonderful. There's over 50 of you here today, which is fantastic. So thank you all for spending your, your Monday evening with us. Um, before you go, not only do I wanna make sure you're aware of our next four workshops, which I put on the screen, um, but Mr. John is facilitating next week's workshop on crucial conversations. Um, and it, it has a broader audience than I alluded to. So he's going to clarify really who next week's workshop is for. Thank you very much, Mr. Schmidt. Um, next week's workshop is for each and every single one of you um, and your friends who didn't attend tonight. Uh, Crucial Conversations uh, is so much about building the relationship with the other person getting past fear and into trust, being able to, to listen to others and understanding why that is so important, and being able to build that empathy. Uh, essentially, you're on the wrong side of your own eyeballs and helping you to understand what it's like to be on the other side and how much more information you can learn by being on the other side of your own eyeballs. So I very, very, very muchly want to reach out to each and every one of you. I wish that I had been able to do this all last year in person and say, please come. There's a lot here. Uh, there's a lot to learn. Um, but there's even, even though uh, it will be like drinking from the fire hose, it will also be, oh yeah, there was this thing Mr. John was talking about. How could I do that? Oh, he's here. Let me go ask him. Right, or let me ask Mr. Schmidt, um, or or uh, a couple other people who've gone through this stuff before. So, please, please come. Love to see you. That's gonna be awesome. Yeah. All right. So make sure all these events are on your calendar. Um, we will obviously see you Wednesday, but also see you back here on Zoom next Monday. Um, and thank you uh, so much, everyone, for for making time for this tonight. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.